parts of session nine about authentication and authenticated encryption. Uh, we have five talks in this session, and the first talk uh, is about cryptanalysis of PMAX, PMAX2X, and SIPX. The authors are Kazuhiko Miyamatsu and Kitsu Iwata, and the talk will be given by Kazuhiko. So, thanks for the introduction. So, uh, this is Joy Tobacco, brother, the guy that was involved me. And, uh, yeah, thanks for coming in the very early morning to the after the banquet and uh, waiting. Okay. So, I'd like to start about the basic things about the SNAP function. It's an asymmetric key function, taking the key and the message to produce the path here uh, to detect the I will hit the folder about the key. And uh, it is known that if this math function is a pseudo function, this protocol uh, is a secure math protocol. For building the map, uh, it is quite common to use to use a block cipher. It is a block cipher mode of operation. Of course the CBC map and the C map and we have a bunch of yeah, proposals. But uh, the recent trend, in the, as the recent trend, the people are more and more to use the tweakable block cipher uh, to use for building the math function to improve the simplicity or efficiency or security. Here, the TBC is an extension of the standard block cipher, and it was formalized by this competitor in 2002. And the uh, uh, tweakable block cipher takes an uh, additional input called the tweak T here. Uh, which is a public input. And uh, any pair of the key and the tweak uh, from the uh, specified the foundation of the message space uh, here. And this is of the, the encryption of the tweak of a block cipher for, uh, with the message and the key is uh, also written uh, as at this point shown. Okay. And uh, I'd like to describe two uh, TBC based map constructions. The first one is a PMAC proposed by Lowerway at Asia Group 2004, which is simple and uh, it was introduced as an abstraction of the PMAC for security proof. And it is polarizable and it is efficient. In the after it processes an n bit message per one n bit block TBC code. And it is secure up to the, to, uh, to the half of n queries, which means that there is a vast amount of security. Is guaranteed. And uh, almost 10 years later, Nitro at Proxic 2015 proposed an uh, extension of the PMAC1 called PMAC TBC1K, which extends the chaining value of PMAC1 uh, from n bit to the 2 n bit in a similar manner to the yes, other PMAC plus, which is a mode of operation having the beyond burst value security. And it is also parallelizable and it is also, also efficient using the almost the same number of TBC calls as PMAC1, but its security uh, has been significantly improved. I mean, it is secure up to the 2 to the n query, not the half of n, which means that it achieves the biodiversity bound security. And on a, as a full app work, uh, Listo and Dandy at CTRC 2017 proposed an uh, defining the extension of the network work. Actually, they propose a PMAC function, PMAC2x and PMACX. And uh, also, that they are using the, this MAC function, they propose the uh, uh, SIBX, which is a uh, deterministic authenticated encryption. And they claim the beyond birthday bank security for all of them, namely, it is secure up to the uh, number of queries that is uh, at most to the N. But however, in this talk, uh, we described that uh, the, the security programs are long by showing the uh, that that works only uh, using the only the number of the two to the half of n queries that means they have a fast attack. So their Jesus schemes are uh, up to fast and secure at best. And uh, we also we described the both distinguish and the very powerful module attack based on the distinction. Okay. Let's start with the description of the PMAC uh, 2x, which is the first proposal of this and uh, not it, it is here, and uh, 
there, as you can see, that there's a typical TBC application for each box. And uh, it, the outputs are, are used to form the two end bit chaining wire here. For the first is only the source of all TBC outputs. The second one is similar, but the, there are the intermediate uh, multiplication by two over the finite field. And uh, this picture shows that the process of the, for the case that the last message block is uh, full, means that it's actually end bit. In this case, there's no pattern. And since the last block is partial, we pass the part here and change the trip value here from 0 to 1 to process the, yeah, to, to form the TBC output here. Okay. And uh, in case of the PMAP TX, so this is simply an, uh, the, almost the same as an uh, PMAP 2X, but an output is uh, reduced to n bits by just storing the two, uh, two n bit output here. And they employed the same handling of the last block as the PMAP 2X. Okay. And they from the security bound for both two maps uh, of the, this form, which shows the uh, yeah, disadvantage is much uh, is negligible if the number of the query Q is uh, much smaller than the 2 to the n. Okay, so what's the difference from the night of mark? The structure, overall structures are the same, but the uh, output has uh, been extended in case of the PMAP 2x without uh, spending uh, no additional PDC calls. And they provide uh, some refined security bounds. And finally, they propose an efficient padding method for the I mean that uh, in case of the PMAP TBC 1K, there's always padding. So, in, so it means that if the message, length of the message is a multiple of N, there's one more additional block. But in case of the PMAP 2X, there's no time such, such uh, message expansion. So this technique has been used uh, in the uh, PMAP 1, and uh, it improves the uh, short input uh, it significantly improves the short input efficiency. And the button uh, I'd like to mention that this is the last one. Oh, seems a nice optimization, but uh, it contains a significant problem. So that is uh, pretty simple. <laughs> We're first to pre uh, prepare the two sets of the messages, of single block messages, where the first one is just an n bit. The second one is smaller than n bit. And we prepare the, uh, the set of the both sides of Q, which is uh, the half of the uh, half of the half of the two to the half of the half of it. <laughs> and uh, if we process the these two sets for the map tagging waffle, the <clears throat> because of the tweak here is different from zero to one. It means that uh, there should be a collision between the DTBC output. Each, each set is somehow has an, uh, produced a distinct output, but uh, because of the difference in the tweak, there is a uh, collision between the two sets. And with high probability, we see a collision in the X bar here, which also means that the collision in the Y bar y here, also means that output is a collision of the two elements. And this collision, is unlikely to happen if this uh, is replaced with a random, random function of the two bit outputs. So, mm, this attack is so quite simple using the, and it works with an activity half of uh, any queries. And uh, this attack can be easily extended to di two directions. The first one, we can uh, extend the input re message regress by uh, just prepending the same prefix to the both sets. And this attack works as well. And uh, once we can detect the collision, it uh, can be used to perform the almost universal forgery attack. By first, we pre uh, use the first prefix and uh, the one block that uh, imposes the collision. And we query that this message to the tagging workload and get the same, 
can use the this tag can uh, can this tag can be used to from the forgery attack by changing the last block from the uh, mi here to the mi plus m j prime. So and this uh, with a slight modification that this attack can be extended to the Pmax, Pmax X as well. So let's move to the description of the SIVX for another proposal of the list and randy. Uh, this is an uh, yeah, authenticated uh, de deterministic authenticated encryption, which is an actual authenticated encryption without NAS. Uh, the, it, it, this is introduced by Lola and Shinto at the year 2006. And uh, oh, sorry. <coughs> it takes an uh, associated data A and prefix the M here to produce a cyphertext C and tag T. And then a uh, standard or very famous construction called the SIV. And uh, a general form of the SIV uh, uses an uh, pseudon function F and IV based encryption E here to. Uh, Produce the M and the A and M uh, just like this scheme. So, and uh, this scheme has been adapted by, by many DA proposals, such as the uh, block cipher based instance of the uh, SIB or SCT or uh, ZE. And uh, our attack against SIBX uh, focuses on the PRF part. Namely, it is a variant of the PMAC 2X, uh, which we can use the VPMAX 2X for simplicity for commission. And it actually involved the two message hashing part, which we call the P hash X here, independently to the A and M. Two have the two and bit output for each, and take an XOR to have the two and bit uh, value here, and we uh, these two two and bit variables are processed uh, in the same manner as the Pmac 2x to have a two two and bit tag. And uh, for encryption part, it uh, is a very excellent uh, encryption scheme called the IVCRT proposed by Pear and Susan in 2016. But uh, our attack is uh, yeah the detail of this encryption scheme is not relevant to our attack. Okay, so I'll skip. So the burst attack against SRBX. It's because it adapts the same padding mechanism as, as in the same manner as Emac 2X, so it, we can easily attack uh, using the flow of the padding. But uh, even if the padding is safe, I mean that it's, an, uh, it's always part, if it, is, it always has a message, in that case, we can't mount an attack based on the yeah, flow of the padding, but uh, they are still uh, vulnerable to the burst attack. Uh, first, we pre uh, propose, uh, prepare a two prefix for each message and associate data, and uh, we pre uh, prepare the MI and AI of the same length, and we change the, only the last block of the associate data and message, and query and query. Then the difference is only in the last block. That means that uh, if the x, uh, difference of the x value here equal to the zero, then the y value here all, also uh, defines uh, will be zero, means that collision. So in that case, uh, we see the output collision. So the point is that uh, if we see the, we can see the, uh, detect the collision of the x with high probability with this query, with these queries, it can mount an attack. Okay. And it turns out that uh, this difference of the x value here is uh, the sum of the four TBC outputs taking two, uh, using the two independent random permutations. That means that we can see the collision with a high probability. And as I mentioned, this attack only works, uh, this attack uh, assumes that uh, both message and the data of the same length, but uh, we can extend the, to the other cases, say the associated data and the message are of the same different range. So, yeah, I'll skip the data, but that's in basically Okay. So, as a conclusion, I'd like to describe something about uh, what went wrong about the design. 
So all schemes employ the long timing method. It's only useful for it is only useful for the up to the first advanced schemes, but not for the beyond the first advanced schemes. And uh, yeah, and each TBC and I mean that an each TBC call for the each message block must be distinct for uh, guaranteeing the beyond the first bound of security for this construction, but uh, because of the padding uh, this condition uh, is violated. And for SIBS, in addition to the this padding error, uh, that it adapted a long parallel composition of PHX. And uh, this is uh, because uh, this code, uh, the this of the error is mostly from the fact that the PHX is only the 2 to the uh, minus 2 and almost universal, but not almost x-ray universal. So it means that uh, uh, the sum of the two almost universal hash, hash function does not necessarily mean the almost universal hash function. So I, uh, we uh, have a communication with uh, Lisa Nani and the Sankri acknowledged our attack and they updated the uh, they are skimming the input version of the, their paper by employing the same padding method as PMAC tbc one k and for SIBX it encodes the ARM in a prefix free manner and it gives given to the single PMAC 2x to have a secure database deposit to encryption. Okay, so the final one for me is that the lessons run. So just simple. Be careful for failure adapt techniques, which was once used in up to the first advanced secure scheme. If you want to build and build the first advanced secure scheme, so there are different ones. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. So we have time for questions. So uh, I, I have one. Okay. So uh, the scheme was fixed. I'm talking about uh, SIBX, and uh, it was fixed uh, to use uh, PMAC 2x. Uh, this means that uh, the process for the associated data and uh, the message context is no longer parallelizable. Yes. And so I wonder if this is necessary or uh, if there is no possibility to achieve. Parallel uh, processing for uh, social yeah. data and the message. Good question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think it's possible to devise an uh, parallel, yeah, where uh, we can parallelize, uh, we can parallelize our parallel processing the associated data the message with something similar to the, uh, what was to be described as the initial proposal of the SIVX. Uh, but uh, it may need, say, one or two TBC or additional T one or TBC calls for each. That's my guess. More questions? Okay, then next time, I'll see you again.